All right, so uh, let's try another example. We're going to be looking at an application problem this time. So here's what it says. An office, uh, an office superstore sells a laptop stylus pen. The price demand function for the stylus pens is given by P of X equals negative 0.2 X plus 55, where P of X is the price in dollars per stylus pen when X stylus pens are sold. Find the rate of change in revenue when the superstore sells 120 stylus pens and interpret your answer. <clears throat> okay, so... One quick thing I want to point out before we get started on this one. Uh, notice they, this example refers to P of X as a price demand function. So far, we've just been calling that a price function, but this is another name that's used for that function because this price depends on X. It depends on how much uh, of this product sells, which is an indication of the demand on this function. So, or uh, sorry, the demand for this product. So price is dependent on demand, which is why we call it that. Um, <clears throat> okay, so the first thing we need to do is get a revenue function because it specifically asks for the rate of change in revenue. And remember, revenue is equal to X times P of X, number of products sold times the price uh, per product when X units are sold. So this would be equal to X times negative 0.2 X plus 55 or after distributing the x, negative 0.2, x squared plus 55x. Okay, <clears throat> the next thing I need is the rate of change in revenue, which we know is what the derivative tells us. So we're going to find a derivative next. r prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of... Um, uh, our function here, so that's going to look like r of x plus h minus r of x all over h. Okay, <clears throat> this is equal to, uh, let's take that x plus h and plug it in for the x's here. So we have negative 0 0.2 um, x plus h squared. Uh, plus 55 times x plus h uh, minus r of x, which is negative 0 0.2 x squared plus 55 x all over h. <clears throat> this is equal to the limit as h approaches 0. So I'm going to do a couple of steps in one here. Let's let's expand x plus h squared, and then we'll also distribute the negative 0 0.2 in. I'm going to do that all in kind of one step. So negative 0 0.2 x squared uh, minus 0 0.4 x h uh, minus 0 0.2 h squared. <coughs> distribute the 55 plus 55x, plus 55h, minus, I'm going to distribute that minus in, so minus negative 0 0.2, that makes it plus 0 0.2x squared, minus 55x, okay, all over h. Now it's all the cancellation, so negative 0.2x squared and positive 0.2x squared, those cancel. 55x and negative 55x, those cancel. If you look at what's left, these three terms all have an h in them. Normally, I would rewrite that step uh, or rewrite you know, what I have here just with all the canceled stuff disappearing from what I write next. But um, let's save ourselves a little bit of space because I don't have a whole lot left and uh, just cancel the h's now. Okay, <clears throat> so what do we have? The limit as h approaches 0 of negative 0.4x, that h is gone, minus 0.2h, one of those h's is left behind, um, and that's a plus 55 right there, so plus 55. Okay, we can do direct substitution. If I take 0 and plug it into my h here, that middle term goes away, and I'm left with my derivative, which is 0.4x plus 55. 
<clears throat> we don't just want the derivative. We specifically want the derivative when x equals 120. Because it says when the superstore sells 120 stylus pens. So r prime of 120 is equal to this. But I'm going to plug a 120 in for x. So negative 0 0.4 times 120 plus 55. And this would come out to 7. It's revenue. Revenue is measured in dollars, but it's not just revenue, it's the R prime, so it's technically a rate of change in my revenue. So it's dollars per unit sold. Um, and what are we calling units here? Well, they're, they're stylus pens, so I'm going to say $7 per pen. Okay, <clears throat> how do we interpret our answer? So I'm going to see if I can squeeze this in over here. When 120 pens are sold, uh, the store earns $7 in revenue per pen sold. Okay? So there is my rate of change, and here we have kind of an interpretation for that, okay? Um, so another way of saying that is that revenue is increasing at a rate of $7 per pen, and that's because this comes out positive. Remember, we keep making this, this, this uh, connection between our derivative being positive and that indicating that our function that we took the derivative of is increasing, whereas if the derivative is negative, we are seeing a, a decrease in our function. So in that case, we would be losing money if something like that happened. <clears throat> All right, moving on. Some terminology. So we've been taking derivatives of functions using this limit definition, but as we have seen, uh, with limits, the, all throughout chapter one, limits can fail to exist for a variety of reasons. So uh, there, all of the examples we've done, the limit has existed, but we could potentially look at other functions where that derivative, that, that limit of that difference quotient, fails to exist for one reason or another. And when that happens, we say that f is non-differentiable. Now, <clears throat> it's often the case that a function, if it's not going to be differentiable, it's only going to, that's only going to happen at specific values, but it might be di differentiable elsewhere. So specifically, if f prime of a for some number a does not exist, then we say that f is non-differentiable or just not differentiable at x equals a. If that limit does exist, then we say that f is differentiable at x equals a. So that term means that the derivative exists. <clears throat> okay. Now, when we're, what we're going to do is we're going to look at um, we're going to look at cases where um, a limit or sorry a derivative may uh, sorry let me back that up. We're going to look at how to determine if a function is differentiable or not differentiable um, at a uh, by by you looking at the graph of the function. Sorry, it took me a second to put that into words. I don't know why that was so hard. Um, so here are some things to look for in the graph of a function to determine whether the function is differentiable or not there. Okay, so the three items really. If a function is, uh, or if the graph of a function has either a cusp or a corner, um, this is what a cusp looks like. It's got kind of a sharp point and the function kind of curves into that point from either end. We call this a cusp. A corner would be something like this. Notice it's made of kind of straight lines that also come to a point as opposed to these curves. But cusp, corner, when those occur, those values right there where the, the point or the 